Welcome back to our 2024 Bible reading plan as we invite you to join along with us as we do think on these things. This is where just regularly we pause to kind of recap, share personal devotions that we have found, and hopefully it's encouraging to you as you read along in the Bible with us. If you're new following along, or maybe you've kind of lost track, please check out the Bible reading plan found in the description below. Now this week as we're reading in Luke, one of the things that particularly stood out to me was Luke chapter 11. Now this is something that we're incredibly, maybe maybe you're not, I'm incredibly familiar with, it's the Lord's Prayer. I'm usually more familiar with Matthew's kind of take on the Lord's Prayer. There's a couple of word differences, same concepts than I am with Luke's. But what I find is often, when I come upon a passage that I'm highly familiar with, I'm really bad about reading it too quickly. And so I, what I just sought to do was just kind of slow down. I, I just prayed and said, God, help me grasp the beautiful simplicity of what your word says. I don't wanna filter it through too many theological grids. I don't wanna filter it through too many cultural grids. I just want the text to speak for itself. So with that being said, this might seem odd. I hope this is okay, but I wanna pause and actually read the first 13 verses to us. I want us to hear God's word together as we dive into the Lord's Prayer and let the text speak for itself. Now, Jesus was praying in a certain place, and when he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. Now, again, I just wanna pause here and say, it's interesting that of all the things the disciples asked Jesus to teach them, they asked him to teach them to pray. And he said to them, when you pray, say to your father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us of our sins. For we ourselves forgive everyone who is indebted to us and lead us not into temptation. And he said to them, which of you who has a friend will go to him at midnight and say to him, friend, lend me three loaves. For a friend of mine has arrived on a journey and I have nothing to set before him. And he will answer from within. Do not bother me. For the door is now shut and my children are in bed with me. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, though, he will not give up and give him anything because he is his friend. Yet because of his impudence, he will rise and give him what he needs. And I tell you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. And the one who seeks, finds. And to the one who knocks, it will be opened what father among you, if he has a son who asks for a fish, will instead give him a serpent? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more your father, Matthew will say, who is in heaven, will give the Holy Spirit to those who ask of him. Again, I'm astonished that the disciples will ask, teach us to pray, not teach us how to be more evangelistic or more this. Uh, this morning, I was also reading some devotional thoughts about how Jesus prays for us in, in the Lord's Prayer, not only there, but also in the great high priestly prayer of John 17. But here is I just wanted the beautiful, beautiful simplicity of the text to speak to us. And I reflected upon it. A few things stood out. Number one was how he asked for perspective. God, it's your kingdom I want. You're the heavenly father, you're the holy one, you're the one supreme on most high that I look to, right? Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. It's your kingdom, it's not mine. The fullness of that kingdom is a future reality, not a present experience. While I might get glimpses of that, I won't experience it in its fullness till the end of the age. So there's a perspective I need when I go to God in prayer so that I'm not focused on self and egocentrality, but I'm focused on God and his supremacy. The second thing that really stood out to me was the petition. Look what they asked for. They asked for provision, physical and spiritual needs, the daily bread. They asked for practice, that they would live this out in a way that they're not only receiving forgiveness, but now they're practicing that forgiveness for others and also for protection from ourselves and our circumstances, right? Because we have an evil foe who wants to destroy us. Listen from those three vantage points of what he says. He says, give us this day our daily bread. That's the provision. 
Forgive us of our sins as we forgive others who are indebted to us. That's that practice. And then he asks for that protection. And lead us not into temptation. The next thing that I found interesting was how then in light of all of those things, Jesus challenges us to be persistent in prayer. And that we have this weird story in that first century culture of somebody going next door in a culture of hospitality and banging on the door at midnight and the person saying, look, it's really inconvenient for me to get up and give you what you're asking for. Nevertheless, because you won't stop banging on the door, I'm gonna give you bread. In the same way, Jesus says, look, I'm much better than that neighbor who doesn't want to give you what you need. Come bang on my door. I want to abide with you. I want to provide for you. But I also want you to realize that all true provision comes from me. So would you humble yourself and pray? From that perspective, this week has been humbling for me to realize, do I pray from such a perspective? Do I also seek to have that type of petition? And am I gonna persevere in the prayer that God has placed on my heart? I hope that's been encouraging to you. If you wanna know more about the John W. Rawlings School of Divinity, please check us out at www.liberty.edu divinity.